Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to make a few refinements to this uh, uh, roughware uh, page that we made the other day as part of our Module 4 participation. So, <clears throat> I made a rookie mistake in here, and one feature of good web design is alignment, alignment of the content. And my web page here, and therefore probably your web page too, doesn't demonstrate very good alignment. So what I'm talking about here is this little filler text up in this bar, um, my uh, heading text here, my hero text anyway, this button, the edges of these, the edges of this big box here, the text within the um, footer area, they should be lined up nice and neat. <clears throat> it, uh, it will definitely improve the appearance of the website. And that's what we should have going on here. Now, part of my mistake was, well, I did this project over a couple of uh, work sessions, and I focused a little bit too much on individual items without really considering the other elements that we created before. So what I want to do here is improve this web page, give it some alignment. You read about that in, of course, your Module 4 PowerPoint. So. Um, yeah, let's get to it. And normally I will start at the top, and ultimately I think I will start at the top. But before starting at the top, I do need to kind of get a feel for what reasonable limitations there might be for this page. Now, of course, my web page is reduced in size, um, obviously. In fact, you, you can kind of get the same impression if I go to this page. Oops, I just hit Control minus. I'm also doing my my next test of OBS Studio recording. Um, one of your classmates is, uh, uses OBS a lot and he made some suggestions for me in the settings, so I'm trying those out. But let's see, I've uh, I got my browser active and I'm gonna do Control minus and I'm gonna zoom out a bit, maybe not that much, but just enough so that we can really see all of these elements all in one chunk. And yeah, that's really what I, yeah, I want to be able to visualize it like this. So I'm actually going to keep it zoomed out for a bit. And I'm looking for the content that seems like it would have the least flexibility. <clears throat> and I think it's going to be these four boxes right here. So uh, I'm going to jump over first to those. And we see, okay, this is the, uh, it's right in here. It's this product section. And I want to play around with the product se section first because I want to know for sure how much space is on the far left and how much space is on the far right. And that'll give me a reference point for the other content on the page. So this is my product section with the various anchors inside of it. So I'm going to go to the CSS. And there's my um, product section. And basically, I just want to see if I can get these pushed all the way over to the far edge. You know, what is it with zero? So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do this. For justify content, instead of space evenly, I'm going to change it to space between. We'll see what the difference is. There we go. So by doing space between for justify content, and I know Flexbox is still a new thing for you. Don't worry, we're gonna definitely do more of it. But with space between, the spacing is only in between the items, not on the far left and the far right. So okay, all right, I, I kind of get what's going on there. And now I can go to my section products and check this out. I can put some padding here. Oh, actually I already do have padding. I have padding of 20 pixels on the top, zero on the right, 20 on the bottom, zero on the left. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change the padding to 20 pixels all around. And that's not nearly as exciting as I was hoping. So I'm gonna do 20 pixels top and bottom, and I'm going to do 80 pixels left and right. There we go. Hmm, how does it look with 100 pixels left and right? Okay, I'm going to do that. So I'm still a little bit incredulous, but you know, I'm so zoomed in or zoomed out, I, I should say. So if I went back to 
Okay, here's what I wanted to see. It didn't look like 100 pixels before, but now it does look like 100 pixels. But I think this is good. This will give us something to work with. <clears throat> so now we know that the left edge of the first product card is 100 pixels from the left, and the right edge from the right the fourth pixel card is 100 pixels from the right, and we're using padding to create that. And we probably using a bigger number than I would in real life, but I think this will uh, demonstrate the technique pretty well. Awesome. So now that we have this as our guide point, let's style something else. I know I said I was going to do top to bottom, but hell, let's go right on to this uh, featured story. Okay, so here's my featured story. And part of my issue is, is I've got this width of 80%. And that's not really the best way to go. So I think what I'm going to do is let's try this. What if I did width of 100%? Let's see what happens. Ah, it stretches all the way across. Okay, margin 40 pixels top and bottom, 100 pixels left and right. Ooh, now because of the width of 100% and because of the, the way I'm doing the margin here, it's actually pushed my featured story off the screen there. So that's actually, that's an unfortunate um, result, right? Whereas I'm super happy with this alignment over on the left. So how wide do I want it to be? Well, I really am not quite sure because different browsers have different widths and I do want it to flex a little bit. So I'm gonna do something a little bit new here. I'm gonna write calc, set of parentheses. Oh wow, that default. If I don't have a width at all, that's looking pretty darn good. Hold on, hold the phone, maybe this. So if I don't have width at all, hmm, okay. Since featured story is a block element, its width is naturally taking up as much space as possible, except of course for the margin. So I will show you calc another day, apparently. We don't need to use it. And that is giving us really good uh, display there. And of course, even if I go to this page and zoom out. Everything looks good. Remember, I'm just looking at the four cards in this featured story because we haven't fixed anything else. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Yeah, good indeed. And control plus, we can zoom back in. All right, I think we're moving. Well, the footer area is right down there. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna head over to the HTML. Now, we could do something similar with padding in the footer area. Nothing wrong with that. But since um, I've used padding, and I guess I've used, yeah, I guess I am going to use margin again. I'm trying to think, yeah, we used margin for this fix, fix down here for the featured story, and we used padding to fix this. All right, I guess we are using padding and margin to accomplish similar things in different ways. I suppose we could do the same thing with the footer area, but I'm going to show it to you this way. I'm going to go to, uh, div class equals inner container. All right, so now my div content, whatever it may be, is gonna be within this div. So I have a div inner container within my footer, and there's my footer. So let's head over to the CSS. There's my footer, I'm, I'm good with all of that. But now I'm gonna do footer dot inner container, is that what I called it? <laughs> I already forgot. Uh, inner dash container, there we go. Footer dot inner container, and it's down here. And let's see, what do I wanna to do to visualize this? How about a uh, border? Two pixels solid hot pink. So let's visualize that inner container. And I don't see it in there. Footer dot inner container. I should, I think I should be able to see something, but I'm not necessarily seeing it. I'm just looking at my spelling. Now, yeah, I should be able to visualize something. Ah, inner container is not a class on the footer, it's a class on the div. So I need to write it this way. It'll be footer space div dot inner container or just footer space dot inner container. Now I can see that pink border on there. 
And now I can do something like um, margin. I can do 10 pixels top and bottom, 100 pixels left and right, and that's going to put my footer, my inner container there. Now you'll notice the, the, the margin top didn't do what it was going to do. It actually is not helping me in this situation. So I'm going to change the margin top and bottom to zero. So when I'm using two units of measurement, the first number is the top and bottom margin, the second number is the left and right margin. But if I do want to ensure some space in there, I think what I'll do is I'll do some uh, padding top of 10 pixels, and that'll create space in that hot pink border. Now, of course, I don't want that hot pink border, so I will just comment that out. And so the inner container is doing its thing. It's controlling that space, but we just don't see it. But now I know we're feeling good about the alignment. The footer area content is going to line up nicely with the edges of the featured story and the edges of the container. We're doing fantastic. Okay, let's move up to this call to action button. And I'm going to line this up with this same hundred pixel alignment there. So let's see, that is my, what is that? That's my call to action hover. Nope, that's my call to action. And I'm, what am I doing? I'm doing a position absolute, perfect. I'm currently positioning at 90 pixels from the left. I'm gonna make sure I position it 100 pixels from the left and that's gonna get the left edge lining up. Actually, do I want to, well, I'm not going to line it up with the width of this. It's as long as the left edge is lined up because this, this little uh, product card may expand and contract depending on space. So it's really just the left edge that I want my alignment. But let's get our heading up here better aligned. So that's my hero text. That's also being positioned. And I'll position that 100 pixels from the left. There we go. And no, I'm not going to move it down. I don't want to cover up the dog there. So, uh, yep, so that's got a little bit better alignment. We're doing great. Now let's head up to our, I'm working from bottom to top apparently, right? Let's see, there's our header nav. Now what we can do here, we can do another inner container. That's a, a pretty good way to go. Same thing we did in the footer, right? So I can go to footer and I'll just copy this opening div and I'll go up to my header. So we have our header nav. Actually, I could just do class equals inner container there. And this is good. This is going to give me an opportunity to show you how we can use the same class in different elements. Um, and then for the promo bar, I'm going to actually paste my inner container there. So let me um, get this organized. In a useful way here. And I need another div. Okay. So I know this is a little confusing to look at. Give me just a moment. And cool. We'll do indent this one. Okay, so within my header, of course, I've got this orange promo bar. That promo bar is a div, there it is, and within my promo bar, there is an inner container. Perfect. Now, after that is my nav, which is the white bar, and there's no inner container on my nav, but it does have its own class, inner container. So I'm using the inner container class on a div within the promo bar, on the nav itself, and on a div within the footer. Now, normally I would put these up near the top, but I want you to see these next to each other so you can kind of see how this might work. So this CSS rule is only the inner container within my footer. So I could do something like this. Nav dot inner container. And I'll put in something like, um, border two pixels solid pink hot pink so we can see it and you will just be able to see this hot pink border around the white bar notice I'm not getting a hot pink border on the footer area because now I'm saying 
inner container for the nav. Now you could be wondering, hey Ralph, you don't have a space between the nav and the dot inner container, but for the footer, you do have a space. That's intentional and that's the way it needs to be in this situation because on my page, the nav contains the class. But in the footer, the footer doesn't contain the class. The footer has a div and the div contains the class. So for instance, I could write it this way, footer space div dot inner container would be for the footer, whereas nav dot inner container is up there. And of course, very similar, you know, for my header, I can do header space div dot inner container. So I'll write that right up here. Uh, header space div dot inner container. And I will do a border, two pixels solid, and what will stand out, because that's orange, actually black looks pretty good. Uh, I'll do a purple though, so we can see that. So I've got a purple border up there in my header, but there's the writing for it. <coughs> now, all right, so, so be it. Well, we can see those borders up there. Let's go ahead and uh, do this the way we want to though. Margin, um, zero top and bottom, 100 pixels left and right. That takes care of the header section. For the inner container, uh, do I wanna do margin? Sure, I can do margin, I think. We'll do zero top and bottom, 100 pixels left and right. And that gets that one lined up. I don't need to see those pink borders. So I can get rid of those. Oops, let's delete all of that. And yeah, things are looking pretty good. So now we can kind of see how that, oh, now notice though, look on my header, my nav has the white background, but I really want that to be for the whole thing. So let's uh, go all the way up. Where's my header? Header, promo bar, header nav. Yeah, so I don't have one just for header, it looks like. So what I can do here is just header, background color, FFF for white, and that's gonna make the whole header white, and you, don't, won't, you won't be able to distinguish between the nav, and there we go. <clears throat> okay, I think that's really what I'm gonna show you. However, one last thing. So you notice we're getting a lot of repetition here, right? Well, you can write this in one group. So I've got header space div dot inner container, fine comma, and I'll do it on a separate line since I've got a narrow code window, uh, nav.inner container, comma, and then I'll do um, footer div.inner container. I think that takes care of it. So I'm doing all three of these, which in theory means I can delete all of this stuff because they're all gonna be controlled by this one group selector. Selector. So yeah, my uh, the orange one looks good, the white nav looks good. All these, of course, these weren't uh, affected. And my footer area looks good. Now I lost my padding up there. So this is where if I want to do something different for the footer area, I, I can still do a separate rule. Now I could see how this looks. Padding top 10 pixels for all of them. That puts the footer area padding in and it does padding for these others. If I'm okay with that, then that's all I do. If I wanted the padding to only be on the footer, then I would just do footer div dot inner container, and I would put the padding top here, and then I wouldn't have it as part of this. Then I can go ahead and take that out. There we go. So there's similarities between these three key elements, but then maybe this third element has something different than the others. And that's gonna give me the padding I want on the footer, but I don't have the padding now on these other things. So you get to decide the way to do it. Um, yeah, I kind of like it with the padding on all of them, but yeah, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna control Z. I'll put the padding back up there. And uh, I'll just delete that. So there we go. So just a few little changes, but boy, I think this web page looks so much better when the content is lined up. It is much more professional in appearance. And I kid you not, if you look at those websites that you think look good, you will notice alignment in their style and in their design. So uh, thanks for watching this, and I hope you do make these improvements to your Module 4 participation page. Take care.